in the angelic ranking in all of creation only man could reveal the dimensions of god and lucifer had perceived this thing so he wanted to enter into it i will exalt my throne above this and so in this holy ghost service my assignment is to quickly point out to you few things that jesus himself said the holy ghost was coming to do as you know them and as i show you how to relate with the holy ghost you will start looking out for these things glory to god so you will not just think the holy ghost is a feeling that comes to excite you many believers all their experience of the holy ghost is to feel something fall down weep and stand up and they think that's the errand of the holy ghost the errand of the holy ghost is not to create fun and euphoria the holy ghost has a deeper assignment and jesus took out time to point out seven basic assignments of the holy ghost in the life of the believer the apostles elaborated on this subject but i want to stick to the thing jesus said tonight so that we will trust him to work out those protocols even in our lives by the workings of the holy spirit when jesus began to speak to the disciples about the coming of the holy ghost the first thing jesus told them the holy ghost will do is that the holy ghost will make them to become members of the family of god and participators in the kingdom of god glory to god you know it takes a lot to become part of god's family when you become part of god's family you don't just enjoy privileges from god anymore you now have rights with god you know john was speaking in john chapter 1 from verse 10 he said he came into the world although the world was made by him he said the world knew him not he said he came unto his own he said his own received him not he said but as many as received him he said to them he gave the right not the privilege he gave the right to become the sons of god so what jesus was talking about here was a reality that will change us forever and ever let me explain to you using physical examples there are many children that we help as a family and as a ministry there are those we give food to there are those we give clothes to there are those we even sponsor in schools we sponsor people up to university level but you know what they all consider it a privilege not a right in fact every time we show care to them they are so humbled because they know they don't deserve it it's a function of our benevolence to do it and so every time they need this support they are standing like strangers hoping that we will be touched to continually help them why because it's not their right and why is it not their right it's not because they are not humans it's not their right because they are not my children i don't owe it as a responsibility to them i do it because of the benevolence of god that is at work through me glory to god but you see when i pay my children's school fees they don't need to beg me to do it it's my responsibility to do it for them and if i don't do it for them i will be considered an irresponsible father and so my child is not hoping that i will pay his school fees he knows that if i have to go out of my way to pay his school fees i will do it whatever it costs me to train him i will do it and i will do it with joy so the difference in my interaction with the guy who is not my child and the guy who is my child is that there is no law comparing me to do it for the guy who is not my child but for the one who is my child is a law the law of fatherhood compels me to take care of him because he didn't bargain for me to bring him into this equation i brought him into this equation so when jesus was telling us that it's important and a more blessing for the holy ghost to come he was telling us that all the things we were receiving from god as a privilege is about to become our rights all the things that we were receiving to god as an act of god's mercy is about to become god's responsibility because once upon a time we were outside the family of god and so god reached out to us because of his mercy not because we qualified for it not because we were worth it he said but god does not want to continually relate with us like that 
God wants us to become his children so that we feel a responsibility towards us so that the things that we would have begged God for we can decree it and they will begin to happen because there will be a shift and a change in status so in John chapter 3 from verse 5 Jesus was speaking to Nicodemus and he told them truly truly he said I say unto you except a man be born of water and of the spirit he cannot enter into the kingdom of God so everybody up until now was outside of God's family everybody up until now was outside of God's kingdom he said but when the spirit comes the first thing the spirit will do is that the spirit will give birth to you so you are no longer a stranger in God's kingdom hoping that God if he's merciful will reach you he said the Holy Ghost will give birth to you in God so that you become the child of God so that God will have a responsibility towards your development and towards your upbringing so what Jesus was telling us is that there will be a change in status you that was once a stranger you that was once a servant hoping that in God's mercy he will reach out to you now you'll become a son of God and you are not just a son of God you'll become an inheritor and a possessor of God and all that belongs to God because in Romans 8 17 where Paul was teaching he said if we are children once upon a time we were strangers once upon a time we were beggars once upon a time we depended on God's mercy and benevolence to help us he said but if we become children he said then are we heirs and if we are heirs we are joint heirs with Christ that means everything that belongs to Jesus now belongs to us everything that Jesus could do in the kingdom we too can now do that's why Jesus cast out devils we cast out devils Jesus heals the sick we heal the sick Jesus raised the dead we raised the dead Jesus prospers we prosper because right now we have become possessors of the DNA of God this is the errand of the Holy Ghost when you receive the Holy Ghost you have become a bona fide member in the family of God what a blessing you know if I take you now to the family of the president even to sit on the table for dining will be a huge privilege you, you will advise yourself but if you are a child you don't need to be invited you can walk into the dining table and say where is food does it not surprise you the audacity that children have have they wake up in the morning and say i'm hungry what does that mean if you are hungry what's my business with that they know that you are a parent they know that you know what you should do so they don't come to you and say daddy if it's okay with you if you are merciful enough if you are kind enough if you have mercy on me enough please provide us breakfast no child talks like that every child understands how to communicate with the father in faith and in audacity mama there's no food in the kitchen i am hungry i want to eat and mama can no longer rest if that child does not eat mama will not sleep she will look for food if she needs to borrow she will borrow if she needs to bear she will bear and the bible said something it says as wicked as our earthly parents are as wicked if our parents are considered wicked compared to god's love does it not suggest to you what a blessing it is to be a child of god so the holy ghost did not just come to make you fall down the holy ghost came to change your status the Holy Ghost came to make you a part of the family of God. Brothers and sisters, I am a member of the family of God. Jesus is not just my God. Jesus is also my elder brother. Jesus is the first in that family. All of us follow behind as siblings of God. Because right now, we are part of the family of God. This is why even when you are sick, you don't beg God to heal you. The Bible said healing is the children's bread. You see why sometimes when we meditate on these things we are overwhelmed and then we can't even sing you know what see let me explain this you know we are still learning the gospel in the whole world we have not really known the gospel with everything that has been taught since the church began we are still learning the gospel if we know the riches and the wealth in the gospel we can't remain here you know, we pray today and we say, Lord, have mercy. I pray it. Oh. In fact, I teach people. That's one of the major prayers to pray. Have mercy. 
But if you look at God's thinking from scripture, all the message that he had was what he utilized when he qualified you to be saved. That's why the Bible said, God, who is rich in mercy, it was on the strength of the wealth of his mercy that you were, you were worthy of death. You were worthy of judgment. You were worthy of condemnation. It is the totality of the riches of his mercy that made him pick you and I. Worthless, useless, worthy of destruction. He qualified us to become part of his family so that he will call himself not just our God but our Father. So when we say, Lord, have mercy now, what we are actually doing is that we are spending from the bandwidth of mercy that he has already supplied in salvation. But all of that will not be possible without the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost came to make you a child of God. That's why the Bible said, the Spirit, Romans 8, 15, cries from within us, Abba, Father. He's reminding you that you are not just a Christian, as one who is part of a religion that you have become part of the family of God and God has a personal relationship with you he said that which is born of the flesh is flesh he said but that which is born of the spirit is spirit brothers I'm of the spirit I'm not of the flesh I'm of the spirit I belong to the family of God and so I can operate spiritual realities I can function in spiritual dimensions I am of the spirit. Is the errand of the Holy Ghost. You know, Nicodemus that Jesus was educating here was a teacher of the law. They knew what to do to please God, how to pray, how to fast. All of that is important. It's the culture of heaven. We keep doing it because that's our lifestyle. But we are doing it from the place of those who are already accepted in the beloved. We, do it, we are doing it from the place of those who are already part of God's family. It is now a culture, not something we do for God to accept us. The Holy Ghost came to make us part of God's family. The Holy Ghost came to make us part. In fact, when we do some of the spiritual things we do now, which we emphasize, it's a sign that we are becoming responsible. As responsible sons who are preparing ourselves to take responsibility for God. It is no longer about, Lord, please accept me. We have already become part of the family of God and some of us who are even invited we didn't even know it was necessary we were not even interested the Holy Ghost had to convict us the Bible said when he comes he shall convict the word of sin some of you when you heard the gospel they were preaching you were smoking when the preacher was talking you say all oh, these people are just making noise here what do you what what do they think they are saying all of a sudden, something entered your heart and you started weeping. You didn't even know when you walked to the altar. Not because he violated your will, but he routed through your will until he convicted you and your will was submitted. Because God will not let you die. God will not let you waste. He wanted to upgrade your status by all means. It's like a beggar who is on the street, who has given up on life, has become hopeless. And they tell him the king is looking for him. He said, the king can't look for somebody like me. The king is too busy. No, they say you are the one the king is looking for. Until he gets there, he never believes he's the one. Until the king embraces him. Some of you, it's when you became part of God's family that it dawned on you that now you are no longer a smoker. Now you are no longer a womanizer. That you have become part of God's family because the Holy Ghost wooed you into God's family. See, this is the difference between Christianity and other religions of the world. They are still hoping that God will accept them. In fact, there's a religion that says when everybody dies, they will all go to hell. It is from hell that when they see their score, those who pray the most and their score is black, those are the ones that they may choose. So even in hell, they are hoping that they will still choose them. But for us, it says you are a choosing generation. You are a royal priesthood. We are not hoping to be choosing. Brother, I'm already choosing. I know where I'm going. Paul said, out of the body is presence with the Lord. Out of the body is presence. I am not hoping to be choosing. I am choosing. I am a choosing generation. A royal priesthood. The status of God has already been credited upon me. There is royalty upon me because I am born into the family of the king eternal, of the king that is ancient, of the king immortal. I am of God. Wow. I go to hell before I hope to be chosen. That's a hopeless existence. 
Jesus said, except you are born of the spirit, you cannot be part of God's family. He said, for that which is born of the flesh is flesh. He said, for that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So the first errand of the Holy Ghost is to make you and I partakers and participators in the family of God. Sit down for a moment. The second errand of the Holy Ghost is to grant us access into realities in the spirit and in the realm of God. So we are not just invited into God's family and we are standing outside. You know, if you are, those of you who watch movies, maybe they give birth to a child and the child gets lost. And then maybe after 10 years or 15 years, they find that child and they bring the child back to the family. You know, there'll be a difference between that child and the ones who have been in the house. This one don't, don't know the love of the father yet. This one does not know a lot of things about the family. So even when they are eating, you'll be waiting, hoping to eat too. Because the mentality is still of an orphan. The mentality is still of an outcast. So you, it will need to, the mom or the elder sisters will have to start teaching you that no, don't ask for anything. Everything is yours. They will need to begin to help you to understand that you are loved. They will need to help you to understand that you are accepted. And it will take that child a while. So one thing is for status to change. Another thing is for access to be given. So the Holy Ghost did not just give us the life of God and made us part of God's family. The Holy Ghost also opens us up to boundless dimensions in God. He makes us understand that everything that is of God now is yours. Everything that is in the house belongs to you. That's the second errand of the Holy Ghost. So Jesus was teaching and he said in John 14, 26, he said, but the helper, even the Holy Ghost, whom the Father shall send in my name, he said he will teach you all things and bring you into remembrance of all that I have taught you. And then you think he's just talking about the teachings. Then you go into John 16, 13. He said, I have many things to share with you about your father's kingdom, about me, about our realm. He said, but you can't receive it now. He said, but when the Holy Ghost is come, the Holy Ghost is the one who guides you into all things. So he brings you into everything that is in Christ. He said, he will take that which is of me and he will give it to you. I used to think the anointing belongs only to Jesus until the Holy Ghost told me, that anointing that is on the life of Jesus has also been made available to you. You can use the same anointing that Jesus used. I used to think faith was only for Jesus until the Holy Ghost helped me to understand that the faith of the Son of God is the same faith that I have. I used to think that Jesus is the one God loves above every other person until the Holy Ghost makes me understand that I have been accepted in the beloved. The same love of the Father that is for Christ is also of me. So the errand of the Holy Ghost is to open your heart to know that everything that is in and of Christ has been made available to you. So a point comes where you can no longer see yourself outside Christ. Oh, they told you you are a waste. They told you you are useless. They told you you cannot amount to anything because maybe you failed a physics exam. Maybe you failed a chemistry exam. And because of that, they dampened your confidence and told you you are a dollar. There's nothing great that will come out of you. And suddenly, the Holy Ghost now reminds you that you have the mind of Christ. That everything God put in Christ's mind, he has deposited in you. Because you too have the mind of Christ. And suddenly, that awareness activates your intelligence. The same physics you failed, you now enter that class and you begin to excel. The same errand of life that you were struggling with. You go there, you begin to observe some supernatural intelligence. And you are wondering, where did it come from? Because in this kingdom, you have to be aware to possess. It was always there. But the Holy Ghost is the one to let you know that this thing is yours. It was already there. Do you know that all of us seated here can heal the sick? But most of us are not aware. So when two of us stand before the sick, one person's heart is beating. Another one is wondering how this person will rise up. Should I pull him up or should I make a declaration or do I blow on the person? And he's interacting with the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost said, drag that person up. And then the guy walks and drags the person up and you are saying, wow, this is a powerful person. No, he's just aware. He's just aware that it has been there. He's just aware. So if you understand this is how it works, you now open yourself to the Holy Ghost. And the job of the Holy Ghost is to keep showing you everything that is in Christ. And as he's showing you, your life becomes a followership reality. And you are following him from one depth to another, from one dimension to another. This is why I tell people, Christianity is not a religion. There's religion in Christianity. 
The religion in Christianity is to help the poor and the motherless. But Christianity is divinity expressed through humanity. We are here to manifest God. Everything we see in Christ, we reflect it. Everything we receive of Christ, we manifest it. This is what we have been called here to do. But that will not be possible except as by the Holy Ghost. This is not something you, you motivate yourself into. This is a reality that is open to you by the Holy Ghost. So what the Holy Ghost is doing is that it's opening up into dimensions. Opening us into dimensions. Now, those of you who are working with the Holy Ghost, look at your life five years ago. Look at your life 10 years ago. If you ask me 10 years ago that I'll be traveling from nation to nation, I would think it's a dream. But once upon a time, the Holy Ghost comes and shows me a picture. And I'm preaching and there's a massive crowd. And I'm wondering. In fact, on one occasion, I stood up and told people, let's gather resources together and buy crusade equipment. When I told them, they nodded like this. After one week, all of them disappeared. I didn't see them again till today. But the Holy Ghost was carrying me. He said, wait, there are other syllables you need to learn before you reach here. And he was showing me some other things. He was showing me prayer. He was showing me fasting. He was showing me scriptures so that I can build sufficient faith. I now got to a level. I didn't need to call anybody anymore. I said, we are going to buy a truck. And in one week, truck appeared. I didn't need to call anybody. I said, we are going to buy a stage. And in two months, stage came from China. I stood up. I said, we are going to buy a bus. And before you know what is happening, four buses appear. And you now talk and it happened. And you are wondering, how are these things possible? The Holy Ghost is guiding you into all realities. The Holy Ghost is leading you. Hear me, brothers and sisters. Your life may not look at like it yet. Don't worry. There is a spirit on your inside writing a program. There is a spirit on your inside leading you into all reality. I can tell you, some of you seated here, you will sit with presidents and discuss about nations. It may not appear what it might be like, but the spirit will make it possible. Take for instance, brothers and sisters, when the angel came to Mary, he said, you shall be with child. And Mary said, I don't know a man. How shall these things be? He said, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you. This power of the highest shall overshadow you. I'm standing before you today because the Holy Ghost brought me here. He will guide you into all reality. He will begin by teaching you Christ. And as you are learning Christ, after a while, you discover you have become like Christ. He will begin by showing you the things that belong to Christ. After a while, you will discover those things belong to you. And then you are wondering, when did I get here? It is the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost didn't come to throw us down. The Holy Ghost came to guide us into all realities. The Holy Ghost came. This is why Jesus said, it is more profitable for you for me to go away. My friends will tell you, if I want to travel every week, I will be around the world every week. Every week. And I won't pay a dime for it. There are people who are pleading with me, sir, if you want to do a holiday in Germany, please come. We pay for flight and everything. So I'm saying, if you want to go to Dubai, please just tell us your whole family. But there's no time. There's no time anymore. You know, even the things we were craving for those days, there's no time for it anymore. Because now we have known the Holy Ghost. He has become our assurance. He has become our joy. He has become our everything. He is, oh, oh. The Holy Ghost will guide you into all reality. Some of you are looking at your life. I've been doing this thing for five years. Nothing is happening. What is happening? The Holy Ghost is training your hand. Because he wants to take you somewhere. He is the guide. Don't worry. I was teaching in secondary school. From one secondary school to another secondary school. When I was promoted, I became HOD in chemistry. You needed to see me in my lab. Sitting on one door stool there. And those white tables are there. And when my students come, I wear my white lab coat. And I begin to talk like about Esther. Oh my God. But the Holy Ghost needed me to master the art of teaching and communication. Because a day will come when I will teach nations. He saw it, I didn't see it. A day will come when I will teach men of all races. Today, I'm from one end of the earth to another end of the earth. Highly on demand to teach the nations. He saw it, but he used chemistry. Listen, sometimes it's not where you are going. It's not the reality of where you are going that we used to teach you. Moses was supposed to lead the whole generation. God gave him ships. And he taught ships for 40 years. But he was going to lead the whole generation. The Holy Ghost is wise. That's why Jesus sent him. Every time you are frustrated, he's teaching you tolerance. Because where he's taking you to, enough tolerance is required. Every time you feel tired, he's teaching you resilience.
because where you are going resilience is required that's why when you reach there you will discover even your frustration was a blessing but it's the intelligence of the holy ghost sit down let me round up ah, time time is a challenge john 14 verse 18 third reason why the holy ghost came jesus said i will not leave you comfortless he said i will come to you I will not leave you comfortless but i will walk come to you how did he come that's what we saw in verse 26 i will pray the father he will send you another comforter i will pray the father the word comfortless there's the word orphans you are part of god's family but you are sent to the earth as ambassadors i won't leave you here like people without covering and support he said even while you're on earth i will come but the way i will come is in the similitude of the Holy Ghost. And if you study that word, comforter, in the Amplified, it has seven synonyms. It means strengthener. So, you, you, there's no way your strength can fail you. If you know and yield to the Holy Ghost, it looks as if you're about to, to expire, and then strength rises from your inside. Because it's a strengthener. And it's not just a strengthener, it's a standby. The generator we are using now is a standby generator. This is not the original generator for this service. But when the first generator failed, the standby took over. So even when everything you know fails, there is a support structure that will take over. That one is not part of your plan, but it's available. He also means your advocate. There are many quarters where your name will be mentioned. You will not be there. Most people are destroyed because they were not given opportunity to speak where their destiny was decided. Don't you know that most of the places where they speak evil of you are places where you can be destroyed and you may never have the opportunity to come there but the Holy Ghost is your solicitor while they are speaking evil about you he will enter the environment because he's a king spirit you don't need to invite him he enters anywhere he wants and when he enters there he raises a defense in your favor he can enter the heart of one person and that one person rises up speaks for you and confusion is triggered in the camp and the people who gather to destroy you they start fighting themselves that's why the bible says, gather together you will scatter it said take counsel together you shall not stand why because our god our god our god there is something our god does for us i can't tell you how many quarters where they conspired against me but suddenly the holy ghost shows up the advocate shows up the solicitor shows up the one that defends you better than you can ever defend yourself that is why the holy ghost came I'm showing you this so that when you pray in tongues, you will know what tongues represent. It's not to have a feeling. It's not to be excited. No, it's to function in your new status as a God man. Participating in the family of God. It's to function in your new status as one who is helped. Marvelously helped of God. Oh, we are marvelously helped. We are marvelously helped. There are many things we started that on the strength of our competence, we can't actualize. But while we are on the way, the Holy Ghost shows up and begin to draw the men that should help us. Draw the resources that should help us. Open the doors that should be for our advantage. That's how we are doing what we are doing. Paul said in Acts 26, 22, he said, having received the help of God, I continue to this day. There are many programs God will tell you to organize. When you look at your bank account, you know it's a suicide mission. But the Holy Ghost will say, go forward, I'm with you. That's enough. Sometimes he raises one man and that one man can bankroll everything and that same program that you didn't have enough for you will come back with spoils of war it's your helper it's your helper you must acknowledge it listen the bible says vain is the help of man if a man will help you it's because god moved him don't cast your trust on men there's one that god sent to be your helper to stand for you in the face of three his name is called the holy ghost if we boast we boast because we know the holy ghost is with us Every audacious statement we make, we make it because we know that our helper is with us. Job said, I look to the ends of the earth and I declare that my Redeemer live it. There is one that will always help me when nobody else is standing with me. This is why the Holy Ghost came. Number four, the Holy Ghost came not just to help you, but to empower you so that you can become the help of another. He came to empower you chapter 1 verse 8 it said not many days from now you shall receive the Holy Ghost and power he came to fortify you 
he came to strengthen and to empower you so that nothing created by the hand of man can destroy you i need you to know that you are an empowered species i need you to understand that your strength is beyond your strategies your strategies are channels through which your strength is deployed especially if those strategies are born by the holy ghost but your real strength is the spirit of god you receive the holy ghost and empowerment that empowerment is what will make you to become a wonder a witness to your generation imagine that god is looking for something to prove his validity and god chose you you know the word witness is the word exhibit the same way you come to court and you bring a proof and exhibit that this matter is real that's who a witness is matoria one who believes something to the point of death so he can be used as an exhibit imagine a god or the almighty god makes a statement and he wants to prove it he say you are my proof that means if they say does god heal and god say yes i heal and they say god prove it he will send you you are the proof that i heal if they say god do you lift men and god say yes i lift men they say prove it he will say go and stand there you are the proof that i lift men if they say god do you favor men and god say yes and they say god prove it if god chooses to prove it you are the one he will send as the symbol of his favor so what the holy ghost does is that he empowers you so much that you become God's exhibit in the courts of eternity. So everything God claims through you, the Holy Ghost proves it. This is why he sent us into the world as proofs or proof producers, as the testimonies of the claims of divinity. We are the testimonies. I told somebody that the last witness on earth is Christians, believers. We are the last witnesses. We are the last proofs of everything God claims. The day we live here, there will be no tangible proof of all of the claims of divinity anymore. Everything God claims he does, you are the channel through which he proves it. That is why he lifted the beggar from the donkey and establishes him among kings so that he can inherit thrones. So that when they say, God, do you lift men? He can present some of us. A poor boy from Benue State that had nobody to help him. A point came, the only uncle that all of us were believing in died. Big. that is the man that everybody calls if there's any challenge if you don't call him you're in trouble and then his assignment was over and he died and we appeared as if we were finished in fact it wasn't even his time he was cut off by a wicked man and it looked as if we were finished but we didn't know the Holy Ghost enough until the Holy Ghost began to show us show us some things that listen and may strengthen our I'm a proof producer but you are the one that we use to prove it so when i came to my wish end nobody to help suddenly the holy ghost kicked into action and the holy ghost began to lift the holy ghost began to lift brothers and sisters i left the classroom into stardom i became a voice to a generation i tell you the truth god lifts man i know you are in a condition now that looks as if the only way out is suicide i came to announce to you you will not commit suicide you will rise up and become a savior in your generation you know what the bible said in isaiah 60 15 he said you are a desolate land he said nobody walked through you he said but i have made you an eternal excellency the joy of many generations i know you can't eat now but hear me not too long from now you will feed many you will feed many i know it looks as if your children will be thrown out of school but there is one that makes you an evidence there's one that makes you an exhibit his name is the holy ghost and i prophesy tonight that power of the spirit that makes men witnesses it manifests through you now see he empowers us to become God's exhibit everywhere men say God does not exist he sends one of us there he sends one of us there there are some of us that the empowerment we have is to prosper and so when they, they say God don't prosper men we show up and when they trace our life there will be no justification for why we are where we are for some of us he empowers us to speak for him and so when we come to a place they say if god is true why did this happen and then we switch it to the prophetic and we begin to say there are some of us he empowers us to 
heal the sick. And so when somebody is sick and the same God heals, sure, he sends us there. So when we gather like this, we become different dimensions of Christ. That's why we are called the body of Christ. I may not be able to make somebody rich, but Apostle Victor can make somebody rich. I may not be able to prophesy, but Pastor Senaga can make somebody prophesy. I may not be able to speak to somebody and doors open, but Pastor Attack can speak and door open. So when all of us gather, we become the exhibit of God as a collective persona. But it's the Holy Ghost walking in our midst, routing different dimensions to bring different level of witness. And when he does this, you know what happens? When he does this, your life becomes the theater that glorifies Christ. That's why the Bible said, when he shows up, he shall glorify me. So the Holy Ghost came to glorify Christ, but he glorified Christ through the proofs that your life produces. This is why the Holy Ghost came. God wants to write a story through your life. A story that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has occurred to the heart of man. See John 16, 14 and 15. See the way Jesus puts it. You must understand this. I am God's proof. I am God's exhibit. If you want to find out if God loves men, look at my life. Somebody who once upon a time was in the club. He was supposed to waste away in alcoholism, dancing in the club. But God refined him and turned him to an apostle. And today he brings many out of that pit. And then you say, God does not leave men. You say, God does not love men. You don't know what you are talking about. When we show off, you know, some of my friends, when they look at me, they say, truly, God is powerful. If God can break you, if God can convert you, then God is indeed powerful. That's what God wants to do. When he makes you an evidence, then he glorifies Christ in you. They say, all things that the Father had are mine. Therefore say I, that he shall take of mine and show it unto you. Next verse. A little while, you shall not see me. And again, a little while, you shall see me. Because I go to the Father. So he has gone. But now the Holy Ghost uses you to prove that he's still around. And the proof that is around is that he glorifies in you. That's why in Galatians 1 24, Paul said, They glorified Christ in me. How can a murderer become a preacher? When they saw it, they knew this is the hand of God. I prophesy to somebody now, before this year is over, they will glorify Christ in you. Before this year is over, they will glorify Christ in you. They will glorify Christ in you. They will glorify Christ in you. In the name of Jesus. John 16 14 quickly i'll round up here because of time he said he shall glorify me he shall glorify me how will he glorify me he shall receive of mine and he shall show it unto you the way he glorifies me is that he carries what belongs to me and he expresses it through you and then you think it's worse in the war you think it's when there is a service like this no way it's in every day of your life that's why in John 7 38 39 it said they that believe out of their bellies shall flow rivers of living waters and he said this spake ye of the spirit which has not yet been given because Christ has not yet been glorified so the same way Christ was coronated in the heavens he will flow through you like a river so that Christ is seen coronated in your own life and he said it's like a river and the same way rivers flow non-stop every day every hour every second that's how god is glorified in your life every day it's not about a miracle service it's not about a sunday service when you get to your job you make every impossibility possible christ has been glorified when men are confused you give them direction christ has been glorified when they give a penny to a man that you shall die you show up and you rebuke death christ has been glorified when people are about to fail in life you show up and prophesy and they are lifted christ has been glorified so you become an emblem of god's power you become a channel of god's dimension i prophesy over someone god flows through you from tonight i said god flows through you from tonight in the name of jesus that cancer will not kill you the holy ghost in you will kill that cancer he said if the holy ghost dwells in you he quickens your mother body that flow of blood will not disgrace you i prophesy to you that blood stops tonight in the name of jesus the witch that swore that unless you die he will not leave in seven days if he does not repent you will hear the news of his demands because everything that was a challenge in your life i decree they become a platform for your manifestation now
Locked the padlock and threw it into the ocean. That ocean will dry. That padlock will come out and it will open on its own account. Hear this? They locked Peter, threw him to prison, kept him in between 16 guards. See, when the Holy Ghost shows up, you will see the excellency of God. The Bible says he commissioned an angel and the angel landed in the prison. They said the foundation shook. The chain fell on their own accord. All the soldiers fainted. The door opened on their own accord. And they tapped Peter, get up your loins. Somebody's loins is about to be given tonight. For the journey of greatness opens to you now. I said the journey of greatness opens to you now. And as Peter came to the gate that leads to the city, the Bible said the gate opened on its own accord. I prophesy over you. Every door shut before you. They open on their own accord now. Did you not read? He said, The yoke shall be broken, the body shall be lifted off your shoulders because of the anointing. Who is the anointing? The Holy Ghost is the anointing. When he shows up, he breaks yokes, he lifts body. I prophesy over someone the yoke you came here with, the body you came here with, by the power of the Spirit. I command them shatter, I command them broken, I command them broken in the name of Jesus. Gives you men, thank God for him. But if you if you have no man, the Holy Ghost can make the difference. The man said, When the water is troubled, they say, I have no man to put me in. God can become a man for your sake. And when the Holy Ghost came, God came for you. I prophesy over you, you will rise suddenly. Your testimony will make men know that God is alive. In the name of Jesus. Some of you from this service. You will be dangerously anointed for a generation. The hand of God will come upon you. He will lift you and make you an example of a man God has helped. I prophesy that is your portion. Let me here tonight to usher some of you into new dimensions of spirit life and of spirit reality. I want you to pray now. Holy Ghost, manifest yourself in my life. I don't have time I would have shown you how Jesus taught us to relate with the Holy Ghost. There are seven ways Jesus taught us to relate with the Holy Ghost. Number one, he taught us to believe and receive him. In John 20, 21, 22, as the Father sent me, so sent are you. And he said, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Ghost. So he taught us to believe in his presence and to receive him. Number two, he taught us to wait upon him. In Luke 24 49, he said, Tarry until you are endured with power from on high. We wait because he's a king spirit. Number three, he taught us to depend on him. John 16 13. I have many things to show you, you can't receive it. I'll be it when the spirit of truth is come. He guides you into all truth. Depend on him. Number four, he taught us to pray for him. That means when we need more of his dimension, we should make demand. Luke 11 13. He said, If you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children how much more your heavenly father will give the holy ghost to them that ask him call upon him if you find any area of your life where his dimension is not sufficient father let there be an infilling that's why when the apostles were flawed and their confidence went down they said they returned to their companies they lifted their voices and when they cried they said the place where they were was shaking and they were filled again with the holy ghost pray for him ask for more of him ask Number five, he told us to be obedient to his leading. He doesn't struggle with anyone. If you want, if you struggle with him, you will quench him. First Thessalonians 5:19 says, quench not the spirit. Ephesians 4:30 says, grieve not the spirit. Disobedience quenches the spirit. And number six, he taught us to honor and to respect him. Mark 3, 28 and 29. Truly, I say unto you, he said, All sins shall be forgiven on the children of men. He said, But whoever blasphemeth. The Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven. And number seven, he taught us to yield. To yield. When he stares us, he said we should yield to him. Yield. Matthew 10, 19, 20. So when you stand there, don't trouble yourself. Open your mouth to be filled with water. Yield. Yield. Tonight, can we yield to the Spirit? Can we ask for infillings? Can we ask for new dimensions? 
lift your hands up, cry to the heavens. There are dimensions of you that is not mirroring God, but you are born of God. You are designed to mirror God. Can you cry? Lift those hands toward heaven. Hear me. Somebody's story is about to change. Oh, I know the God that helps men. I know the God that lifts men. I know him. I know him. I've encountered him. I stand here to talk to you tonight because I've seen a little bit of his mercy. I've seen a little bit of his help. There is an anointing that is about to descend here. That anointing is for the lifting up of men. I don't care whatever pit life has thrown you to or devils have thrown you to. Tonight you will hear the voice of the Son of God. And it's a day that here he shall live. You can be in business, you can be in ministry. This is your hour. That anointing shall pray to you tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, wherever they are standing, men that must be lifted, men that are crying for the lifting of the Spirit, now I declare, let the hand come upon them, Lamb of God come upon them. Holy Ghost, Perake, Pakuna, Zapatanish, such as I have encountered, such as I have, from the left to the right, from the front to the back, to the gallery, to those on land. Holy Ghost talks now. This is the hour. I release that fire. I release that flame. Move, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. There are seven of you that that fire will come upon so heavily now and it will shift you from where you are to where you ought to be. Father, wherever they are standing, let that activation begin now. Let that activation begin. Touch! Same measure! Say so with the comfort that we have received of the Lord, we comfort others. Where are you standing? That thing that says you will be obscure in your generation, I come to lift that veil. I come to lift that yoke by the Spirit. Come on, Peter. In the angelic ranking, in all of creation, only man could reveal the dimensions of God. And Lucifer had perceived this thing, so he wanted to enter into it. I will exalt my throne above the